first step, open up Brawlbox. File, open. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this. All of them are extremely tedious. Kirby Motion, ex uh, etc.pack. Now this is the first way to do it. It's very slow. You open up Kirby Motion, animation data, animation for the character. Then you go to whatever animation you want to change. Remember, we're not switching, we're actually editing it. Yes. And now when you click on it, you can see that all of this pops up, and this didn't exist before. Okay, now, these are some important things. If the box is white, that means it is not a keyframe. That's just what it is. So, almost everyone's scale stays at 1. That's the actual size. So, scale is the size. Rotation is the rotation, and the translation is the position farther away or not from the actual character. Translation is not used that much because it kind of looks weird, but you could use it if you wanted to toy around with it. X, of course, the X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Uh, what I was talking about earlier with keyframes is anything in yellow at this frame frame 1 out of 18, it is for sure 0 for x translation, 3e-06 for x rotation. It has to be that. If we go to 2, it's not a keyframe, and you can see that uh, the body big M dummy node does not change. So they, they set it on frame 1, and it doesn't change throughout the entire animation. If we went to, say, frame 18 and changed this from 06 to 36, it would become a keyframe, as you can see. And as we go down, it scales down towards what that keyframe was. So it goes from frame 1, it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, all the way until we get to frame 18, which we set as a mandatory. It has to be 3... 3e36. The best way I find to animate is to go to wherever you have your pack files and sticking with the Kirby motif, uh, open up the fit Kirby 00.pack and that's the pack file of the texture. So it's going to have the model data in there. So you go to the model data click on the Kirby, click preview. Now Kirby looks messed up, but that really doesn't matter too much. And if you don't know how to view models in Brawlbox, check out that tutorial. You'll be able to understand a lot better what I'm doing. So uh, open up all the panels, and you can see this is where the, all the bones are. This is an important panel for editing. Okay. Um, under load external file, load, and you might want to, before doing this, check out my other tutorial, uh, Assist Trophy Moveset Swapping, because I go into exactly what this means and all of that. So let's say we're doing Kirby. So you gotta, if we're gonna edit Kirby's moves, we gotta open Kirby's motion pack. Okay, so just close that, and we should have this before, but I've kind of forgot. Because you can't save as yet, uh, I recommend saving your Kirby Motion.pack. Just copy it to the desktop, and that will be the one that you're editing. That would be the easiest way. I'll just go back, preview this really quick, because this window can't be minimized. And if Chiral is watching, that would be a nice feature. So now we're back, and we got to load, and we're going to load that one that we want to save over, because there's no save as. Again, if you're watching, we'd like save as. Fit Kobe Motion, etc. Pack. And this loads up every animation for Kirby. So it's good stuff. Uh, wait, let's edit jump back. So when you jump backwards, that's what you do. You do that backflip thing, right? You're in the air, and then you do that backflip. So, 
uh, when we're editing this, we can see that it has 53 frames. Now there's no problem in giving it more frames. So just for the sake of this, let's just uh, keep it like this. Now for easy animations, now one of the problems with Brawlbox is that uh, the parent item directly controls all of its children items. So for instance, a human's arm, the shoulder is the first thing, and the hand is the last thing in the order. Like shoulder, bicep, forearm, hand. If you edit the shoulder, the entire arm will move, including the hand. In this way, you don't have a hand sticking off the model, because when you move your shoulder, your hand moves too, right? So it's very real in that sense, but if you make the hand uh, two times in scale, and then you make the shoulder two times in scale, that hand will actually be four times in scale. So make sure you always edit from the top down. Now the top of every character is hip N. And whenever you see something with N, that's like the top. And sometimes it's with J, like shoulder J is another thing. But for us, we're just going to copy hip N. And let's just go over here, and we're going to copy all of this great data, and go up one frame, and paste, up one frame, and paste, up one frame, paste, up one frame, paste, up one frame, paste, up one frame, paste, paste. I'll skip ahead here just to get to the end. Okay, once you've pasted all of those, you might be thinking, oh, what was the great video about that? But if we look, now when he does a backflip, it's obviously much different. He doesn't actually rotate that much, he just does the backflip. So go to body N, go to 25. That was copy this and do the same thing. Cut ahead again. So up, paste, up, paste. Okay, once you get to the end, we can see that the animation is now quite a bit different. He just really backflips, uh like no spins, not that much personality. Now remember that uh, you can go full out and edit every single frame, but every time you um, edit a frame, which is really what we should have did earlier, it adds to the file size because it has to remember that stuff, right? So really what we could do is go to like um, uh, right shoulder J, which is at the top of that arm, right? And copy frame 25. And then only paste over ones that we see animations on. And it might be all of them have animations already, but if you see ones that don't, don't paste on top of them because that's just adding to the file. See like frame 32 on right shoulder J? It has nothing. So just leave it because that won't actually change anything. I'll skip to the end again. Okay, once you have all that done, that we've done right shoulder J, it would be a good idea to do left shoulder J. And just do the exact same thing go to frame 25 and copy it and only paste over ones with yellow keyframes. I'll skip ahead again. Okay, once you have that, let's just preview it. It looks like his arms are up all the time now. You know. Yep. Uh, we could do legs, you could do arms. I'll be making more tutorials on how you can actually utilize this better. Like I've made my own animation. I've actually been working on making that Mario Falcon Punch we worked on earlier, in an earlier tutorial, to actually be the right size and proportions, or test out, but you can tell that this is different from Kirby's normal back jump, and I'll put the demonstration in the video, but um, really, I've seen uh, someone made Falco do an air guitar for like when he wins, we can even make new animations for characters who don't exist. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't fear this method. It's really friendly. It won't get any crashes unless you do something crazy. And once I accidentally made Captain Falcon, I believe, 10 hundred thousand times bigger, still didn't crash. So don't worry about crashes. Just worry about having fun and editing 